The Terrible Two by Mac Barnett and Jory John. Illustrated by Kevin Cornell. Read by Miss Claybaugh. Cow Fact Number 585 A dairy cow can produce 120 pounds of saliva per day. That's a lot of imperial teaspoons. Fact 586 Cows can walk upstairs, but not down, because of the way their joints work. Sounds like the excuse my grandma gives, although my grandma can walk neither down nor upstairs. Fact 587. Cows are social creatures and prefer to form large herds, but will sometimes avoid certain cows. That's right, there are popular and unpopular cows. Chapter 21. Miss Shandy stood in front of the class wearing a long skirt and red sneakers. Would anyone like to be the first to share their report? She asked. Niall Sparks raised his hand and kept it aloft, his elbow forming an almost perfect right angle, just like Miles knew he would. Miss Shandy paused to see whether any st other students would volunteer. Nobody did, just like Miles knew they wouldn't. Okay, Niles, come on up. Niles strode to the front of the classroom carrying a black shoebox under his arm. It was all going to plan. One thing Miles Murphy had reluctantly acknowledged after the Ford con forged confession fiasco was this. If he wanted to outprank Niles, he was going to have to get better at planning. Handwriting, pen varieties, the mail sorting responsibilities of the school helper, Miles hadn't looked into any of these things. Miles admitted that yes, he could learn from Niles Sparks. It made him queasy to admit it. And so he had embraced new tactics. He would be more alert, more patient, and above all, more prepared. A couple of weeks after Niles had confronted him in PE, Miles began brewing his next prank. The scheme started to take shape in Miss Shandy's social studies class. She designed a one-page oral report on ancient civilizations. Niles had taken a quick look at the grading rubric before raising his hand. Miss Shandy, may we use visual aids to enhance our presentations? Sure, Niles, but I'm not giving extra credit. But if we could use a visual aid, uh, if we thought it simply might supplement our own learning and the learning of the class? Yep, that's fine. Yes, Niles whispered loudly. Let me guess, said Holly. Diorama? Niles didn't say anything, but he'd already begun sketching a rectangle on the back of his rubric. At lunch, Miles got the scoop from Holly. He does a diorama for everything. Last year, he made like nine dioramas. In English, we had to do book reports, and he made a diorama of the Lord of the Flies. It had a jungle with real moss and a light-up boar's head with little red eyes that flashed. In math, we did a unit on three-dimensional shapes, and he brought in a rectangular solid that doubled as a diorama of the personal library of René Descartes. In science, we had to do earthquake dioramas, and he did a diorama of a thrust fault, plus a second diorama that was a making of a diorama of the original diorama. He really likes dioramas, Miles said. You think? said Holly. Hey, Holly, said Miles. This, has been, this had been bugging him for a while. Have you ever seen someone look cool in a turtleneck? Sure. Steve McQueen. Richard Roundtree? Who are they? Old movie stars, Holly sighed. Hey, can I have your fruit snacks? Miles loved fruit snacks, but Holly had earned them today, or at least half of them. This was good information. Hi, Holly. Hi, Nimbus. Josh Barkin had sidled up, sidled up to their table. Hi, Josh, said Holly. Josh pulled out a chair and sat in it. Holly, let's talk. He gave Holly the same smile he gave the teachers. As winter break approaches, I know we're all considering our political futures. I hope you're not planning on running for class president when we come back. I am. 
Well, I admire your optimism, Holly. I really do. But given that you've lost the last two years, I thought I'd offer you a place on my ticket. How would you like to be vice president of our class? We don't have vice presidents, Josh. I could talk to my dad about creating the position. I'm running for president, Josh. I'm sorry to hear that, Josh frowned. And while of course I'd never beat up a girl, I will beat up your Nimbus friend here if you run. Holly shrugged. Go for it. Miles gave Holly a look like, this is just a tactic, right? Holly gave Miles no look whatsoever. Josh stood up, made sure nobody was watching, and kicked over the chair. You guys are both Nimbuses. Thanks a lot, said Miles after Josh was gone. He's already after you anyway, said Holly. At least now you're a political hero. She had a point. Welcome to the resistance, said Holly. Here, have some fruit snacks. Miles wanted to remind her that the fruit snacks were already his, but he figured she knew that. The reports were due in two weeks. Never before had Miles's pranking journal been so full of diagrams, outlines, and questions. By Friday, he had the prank figured out. Step 1. Research While changing for PE, Miles had snuck a peek at Niles's school shoes. Shiny black wingtips, size 7. Write that down. Step 2. Lay the foundation. Step 2 began as soon as his mom picked him up from school. I need new school shoes, said Miles. You just got new shoes, said Judy Murphy. Not like these shoes, nice shoes. Those are nice shoes. Nice shoes. Those are nice shoes. Nice, nice shoes. Those are nice, nice shoes. This wasn't working. Change track. Mom, it's just that... Never mind. What? No, I don't want to talk about it. Miles, you can tell me. Well, it's just that the kids are making fun of these shoes. Bullies? Are they bullying you? No, it's not like that. Is there bullying going on at your school? Because I just watched an hour-long show about bullying and... No, no. It's just... Because you should not change who you are because of a bully. Look at me, Miles. Do not change you or your shoes. Now, if you want me to talk to... Principal Barkin about setting up a zero-tolerance zone, this was going all wrong. Mom, I'm not being bullied. That's not even the main reason I wanted new shoes. Come on, Miles. The main reason I wanted new shoes is, I think I need to stop dressing all sloppy. It's like you said when we were school shopping. It wouldn't hurt me to start dressing more like a young man sometimes. By 4.22 p.m., Miles owned a pair of black wingtips just like Niles's. He hated them, but he was pretty excited about the box. Step 3. Commence construction. In the mornings, as soon as his mom's car was out of the parking lot, Miles untucked his shirt and changed into his sneakers. After school, he straightened his clothes and put the black wingtips back on. And every night, he worked on his diorama. First things first. Miles wore a nine. A little whiteout and a permanent marker fixed that quickly. The rest of the diorama took a lot longer. Ni Miles spent all week cutting, drawing, gluing, and sculpting. The work lasted through the weekend. Late Sunday night, he finished. Miles was too tired to admire his own handiwork. Well past midnight, he dashed off a page about Egyptian pharaohs and went to sleep. On Monday morning, Niles walked into Miss Shandy's classroom carrying a black shoebox that, on the outside at least, looked just like the one in Miles' backpack. Niles took a seat and tucked the box neatly beneath his chair. Inside Miles was a wild inside Miles was wild, sweaty, and jittery. Outside, Miles was boring, normal, like a shoebox. The bell rang, like it always did. Miss Shandy took roll, like she always did. Niles got up and hung the attendance sheet on a hook outside the classroom door, just like he always did. And that's when Miles dropped his pen on the floor and, in one smooth motion, bent down, 
switched the two boxes, and retrieved his blue Bic Velocity 1.6 millimeter ballpoint. Niles returned to his desk. He hadn't noticed a thing. Miles stared down at his report and smiled as he pictured the mayhem that would soon ensue. Because Niles had made a diorama of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And Miles had switched it with a diorama of the Principal Barkin taking a bubble bath. Miss Shandy stood in front of the class wearing a long skirt and red sneakers. Would anyone like to be the first to share their report? she asked. Niall Sparks raised his hand and kept it aloft, his elbow forming an almost perfect right angle, just like Miles knew he would. Miss Shandy paused to see whether any other students would volunteer. Nobody did, just like Miles knew they wouldn't. Okay, Niles, come on up. Niles strode to the front of the classroom, carrying a black shoebox under his arm. He placed the shoebox on Miss Shandy's desk. The top was still on. Niles loved a big reveal. I am here to show you one of the most beautiful sights in the world, Niles said. Miles covered his mouth with a folder. A magnificent vision that until today has been obscured by the mists of history. It was almost too perfect. Prepare yourselves. We are journey journeying to a forbidden sanctuary that will surely amaze you. Niles reached for the top of the shoebox. Behold! With a flourish, Niles Sparks removed the top and revealed a stunning replica of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Even I have to admit that's a pretty good diorama, Holly said. Ancient scholars attribute this wonderful wonder of the ancient world to King Nebuchadnezzar too, Niles went on. Although some historians believe the Hanging Gardens of Babylon weren't in Babylon at all, but belonged to the Assyrian king, Sennacherib. Impossible. This was impossible. Miles had switched the boxes, hadn't he? He had, right? Maybe he should double check. He should double check. Because if Niles had the Babylon diorama, what was in his backpack? Miles ducked under his desk. He opened the shoebox and released 2,000 crickets into the classroom. <laughs>